Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Last week's show was all about bringing snakes out of hibernation. Well, you know what? We're going to go ahead and show you some of the projects that I'm really excited about. You're watching Snake Bites. Every year when I bring clubrid snakes out of hibernation, it's almost like Christmas for me. It's basically getting an entire collection that I haven't seen for a few months back around. And I tell you what, I kind of almost forget what animals are in here because I'm rarely in here. Sam pretty much takes care of this collection during the winter. And it's even projects like this high yellow desert king that just get me really excited. And that's what this show is going to be all about. It's just basically running through the Kluber collection and showing you some animals that are brand new breeders and even some old breeders that I'm just really excited to see again. Holy cow, take a look at this albino banana cow king. I mean, that thing is super high yellow. This is a brand new breeder, and I can't wait to get this animal into some other females just to try to produce some more super high yellow banana cows. Every year when I bring snakes out of hibernation, the one animal I'm really excited to work with again are garter snakes. After all, that's where my passion started with snakes, catching garter snakes out in the wild. This is an albino Great Plains or Radix garter snake, and they're really cool because they have live young. So what's really interesting about these guys is that they're not only animals that don't have to eat rodents, you can feed them fish or worms, but also one day when you open up the cage after breeding them, bam, there's a whole bunch of baby garter snakes, and that's really cool. I worked with these guys for the first time last year, and that's T-positive Nelson's milk snakes. And producing them was one of the highlights of my colubrid season last year. What's interesting about the genetics with these guys is that when you breed a T-negative to a T-positive or normal albino Nelson's, half the babies come out T-negative. So you don't have to worry about producing heads. It's really cool, so we're excited to get them into some projects like bullseyes and other patternless Nelson's that we're working on. It's just a cool project and a really cool snake. These black milks are truly breathtaking. They're not quite an indigo snake, but they're the second best thing for sure. They're definitely bigger than the Mexican black kings. I mean, this girl has to be a good five foot long, and they still have those really heavily keeled scales, almost like an indigo snake. Again, what's really cool about black milk snakes is that when they're born, they look just like tricolor milks, and then when they get older, like I said, they turn jet black. But if you look really closely, you can still see a little bit of their banding. Oh, I hope I have some of these babies this year. Obviously, we have a very large collection of snakes here, and we know that a lot of you guys collect snakes among various other reptiles, but we want to know what kind of things do you collect that aren't reptiles or snakes? Personally, I collect Legos, little guys, little minifigures, stuff like that. It's kind of silly. Chewy collects his own body hair, and he makes little creatures out of them, and it's kind of creepy and gross, but that's what he likes to do. We want to know what you collect. Leave a comment below and let us know. I've always really been into Brooks Kings. And I tell you, they're just an amazing animal. They get really big, about six foot, which is large for a colubrid, healthy body, and they're always willing to eat. You guys have seen Chewy get chewed up by these guys before. It's not because they're mean, they're just always hungry. And they're actually really easy to breed too. And with cool mutations like this ghost wipe sided Brooks and all kinds of other stuff that's coming up, it's just an exciting project to be involved with. I've said it before and I really do mean it. When it comes to non-venomous snakes and naturally occurring colors, Mandarin rat snakes are really one of my favorite colubrid snakes. So it's just great to get a chance to look at them after a few months of them being chilled down. Oh, you're awesome. Wow, I almost forgot how beautiful these snakes are. These are called albino theri and they're actually a hybrid. They're a hybrid between an albino roof and I in a theri or a variable king snake. But I tell you what, even not being into hybrids that much, these are breathtaking animals. I just can't wait to get some eggs from them. Oh, you're a beauty.
These albino Arizona mountain kings are really special to me because we had the very first ones. We bought the project off a guy down in Kansas that spontaneously produced the albinos. And I tell you what, Arizona mountain kings are just really cool snakes. The only problem with them is that they only produce about three to six eggs and they don't double clutch. So it's one of those projects that you certainly aren't going to ever mass produce. When it comes to colubrids, really my first love was the corn snakes. It was really the first animal that got me going into snakes and really colubrids. So all corn snake projects are really exciting to me. They're just the perfect animal. A great pet, easy to breed, large production, and things like this ghost stripe. Man, they're just so incredibly good looking. Ugh, can't wait for eggs and all this stuff. Honduran milk snakes are just awesome animals and the fact that I produced the very first albino Hondurans along with being really close up on the aneuthristic Hondurans, I think I was the second guy into that project, they just have a soft spot in my heart. And if you want a bigger colubrid, so you want a milk snake but you want something that gets about six foot, Honduran milk snakes are definitely the right choice. Oh, when it comes to corn snakes, you guys know one of my favorite projects is the scaleless corn. This year is the first chance that we have to produce some mutations and scaleless corns, or some cool paint jobs with scaleless animals. Again, it's a recessive morph, so combining two of them means it's double recessive, which means you're only talking about one out of 16 if you're talking two morphs, and goes bigger and bigger the more morphs you get into it. Nevertheless, they're just amazing animals, and I hope I hit some of my odds on these clutches. Whenever anyone comes to visit me and I show them my colubrid collection, one of their favorite snakes is certainly the rhino rat snakes. <laughs> I couldn't agree more with them. They're just such interesting animals. Not only are they beautifully colored, but it's just so cool to see that little appendage on their, their nose. And I tell you what, they're a little feisty when they come out of hibernation. As you can see, he's kind of looking at me like he might want to take a shot at my face. But normally these guys are super, super tame. Can't wait to have little babies. And again, when they're babies, instead of being green, they're actually all tan, which makes it kind of cooler. Oh, you gotta produce for me, baby. I certainly would be remiss if I didn't mention hognose when it came to colubrids. They're one of the coolest colubrid snakes and certainly become really popular in the pet trade, including investment quality animals, just like this pastel pink female that hopefully is going to produce a beautiful clutch of eggs for us. As you can see, we're just sharing a few of our really cool projects here when it comes to colubrids. There's going to be so much more that we're going to be able to show you over the next coming months. I know there's going to be some really cool breeding shows, even some egg laying shows, and eventually even some baby colubrid shows so make sure you stay tuned for that gosh I'm just so happy to have the colubrids out of hibernation so I've been getting a lot of emails lately asking if mothballs will repel snakes or even stop a snake from biting so I figure we'll put it to the test a few different ways let's send it over to George and debunk this myth all right, guys, so they brought the smartest person in the shop here to test this shit out. I am going to put down some mothballs and see if they repel snakes or not. All right, we got our snake, and let's test this out and see if they repel the snake or not. All right, so far, snakes have not been repelled by mothballs. So now we're gonna see if a hungry snake offered a rat next to mothballs refuses it. Okay, Chewy here. Now that we're done with those rookies, the real deal is gonna see if these mothballs do work. I'm back to visit my old mean friends, the king rats. I'll see if this detours them. From biting their old pal. Mothballs. You don't like mothballs. Here's mothballs. 
It seems to be working. I smell like mothballs. Smell like mothballs. I smell like mothballs. Smell me, you do not bite. Cause I smell like mothballs. Look at this. This is obviously bull these mothballs. I'm gonna give them to my grandma and she can put them in her closet or ah, it. For this week's comment of the week, the question was, do you go to reptile shows? Which ones? And SMN1117 said, Brian was coming to a local show in Wheaton, Illinois about six weeks ago and it fell through for some reason. So I wish he would make an appearance for all of the Chicago Windy City reptile community. Yeah, I definitely have to get back to the Wheaton show sometime really soon. I have a lot of good friends out there and the Windy City reptile people are fantastic. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the show and got a glimpse of some cool projects that we're starting to work on. If you guys want to follow our progress on our breeding season and see a lot of really cool pictures and so on like that, make sure to hit us up on Twitter at SnakeBitesTV. Until next time, this has been SnakeBites.